So imagine a world in which corporations are very sophisticated players in the anti-corruption movement. They are the leaders, not the followers, in getting comprehensive reform done. They are working hand in hand with uh, governments and NGOs and other key stakeholders to really achieve uh, significant change in how the world addresses bribery. And they're doing it not because it's just good for society, but they're also doing it because it's really good for their business. Now, this world that I'm describing, it doesn't exist today. Um, but this is a world that we call anti-corruption as strategic CSR. And we really, uh, through our research, are identifying a few things that corporations can do to really start to drive that future vision. Unfortunately, today, anti-corruption for corporations is really something that they don't have on their radar screen. They don't see it as something that they address. Uh, while they may address things like health care and education and environment, and immigration or child labor, a range of things that corporations can look at. Anti-corruption is not one of them. They focus on getting their own house in order by doing ethics work, um, training their people not to bribe others, um, you know, really you know, having whistleblower policies, et cetera. And that's all well and good and should be done by corporations. But what they're not doing is they're, look, they're not looking outside of their own corporate walls to see what they can do to improve the external environment. And uh, we found that there really are four different things that corporations can do to be really significantly impacting the anti-corruption movement. The first is that they really need to look at ensuring compliance with, with what they're currently doing. So expanding the, the role of ethics and, and compliance work in their, comp in their company, doing it throughout their corporation, so not just in headquarters or a few different locations, but doing it throughout the world. Um, and really trying to be consistent in how they do that because they really need to maintain integrity throughout their organization. Uh, look no further than the Siemens uh, an, uh, corruption scandal that, that took place in 2008. They, uh, they got caught for doing all sorts of bribes throughout the world and it has cost the company nearly $2 billion in fines as well as lost business. The second area is collective action. Collective action is typically broad and diffuse. Um, companies can sign onto these packs, but they're not effective. They don't have teeth in terms of accountability, and it's really hard to measure if they're having any impact. So we uh, envision that corporations should really have a, a stronger role in that. We saw one example is the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, EITI, which is an effective pact, but also could be one uh, that is also could be very much strengthened. Thirdly, um, Corporations need to engage demand-side forces. Demand-side forces are the uh, recipients of bribes uh, versus the typical supply-side forces, which are the givers of bribes. So if you think about the private sector, that's the typical uh, source of bribery. The demand-side is, is typically the government, the people that accept bribes. And corporations are really doing next to nothing in this area, and we were really surprised to find that corporations think that's not their territory. There are a few uh, exceptions to that rule. GE is one of them. GE is doing extremely innovative work in China, for, of all places, to really train uh, Chinese government officials on, on transparency issues and on awareness of um, various anti-corruption approaches. Um, the last approach that corporations can do is leveraging their assets and expertise. Uh, corporations possess unique capabilities that NGOs don't have, that governments don't have. Uh, it includes their communications power from their brand, from their CEO's voice, their technical expertise, uh, and, and really, uh, in addition to their resources, the, all these things can be brought to bear on the anti-corruption movement, and they haven't been as much. We saw a few exceptions. Merck, which was the sponsor of, of, one of, uh, of a lot of the research that we did around this, uh, has been sponsoring uh, international ethics centers for the last 10 years or so to really fight corruption in emerging markets. Google is another example. They're using um, some of their IT skills and capabilities to help African governments to uh, be more transparent about where their government spending and, and where their budgets are actually going so that the people in those countries actually see where their money is going. So those are a few examples of how corporations can really address uh, this broader issue of anti-corruption and, and how they can get more involved to really have a step change in their impact on this area. Uh, we really think that corporations are a critical piece of the anti-corruption puzzle and it's a, uh, it's a critical piece because it's both a social imperative and a business imperative for them. And we think it's a ripe area for corporations to get more involved in. 
So if you're interested in learning more, I encourage you to visit FSG's website and check out the paper or check out a recent webcast that we did. And thank you for your interest.